So, what's wrong with exports in, in the Philippines? Now, talk, talk to you as somebody that actually wants to set up a business there. Currently, there is too much corruption. The cost of transportation is horrendous. Um, getting parts in and sending them out, they put taxes on this and taxes on that. Even the ballot buying boxes have been having a lot of um, corrupt customs officials raiding them and stealing stuff. Um, it's very difficult to actually make money with that sort of environment. It's okay if you're a multinational, they still have the same problems, but what they do is they just buy off the corrupt. Anybody that says they don't, I would say they're a liar. It, um, when I say that, I'm, talking, I'm not talking people that trade a couple of hundred thousand pounds a year, I'm talking those that are doing millions. Um, but the, the reality is, a lot of it is down to the corruption. It's not, it's not about the actual business access. In fact, many Filipinos suffer with the same problems. I was talking to people in the handbag industry. They do the, they weave the, the bags, uh, sorry, the bags, um, because they're far superior to the Chinese coffee, um, where they weave them out of banana leaves and stuff like that. Uh, how they make it, I don't know. Um, I know what they use, but I don't, I don't know how they weave it. Um, but the fact is, the cost of posting the stuff, they just couldn't make it work. They used to, but they changed all the tariffs, which is what has affected their, their business severely. Uh, it's rather sad though, because these are the industries that are A, sustainable, if you actually let them let you be able to post the stuff, but B, employ local people by the thousand. Same with the shell craft stuff. There's a huge market for it. But a lot of the problems is you've got to be paying off people to get stuff in and out of the Philippines. Uh, and I know in the West, a lot of it is already pre, predetermined corruption. Uh, the example here, I can go and get a bottle of wine from the vineyard over the road, 50 cents. By the time it gets to the UK, it's four, four pounds. Why? Because they charge three pounds in tax. How they, how they get to that figure, I have no idea on, on such a cheap, cheap costing product. Um, but in the Philippines, you've got the problems of the tariff, cost of transportation is expensive, and then you've got the customs corruption on top. So if you're thinking of going to the Philippines and saying, right, I'm going to export X, Y, Z, it's got to be painful, it's expensive, it's headaches. Um, I do know people in the industry that do deal with import-export, but at the same time, there's no guarantee with that. When Aquino come to power, the last uh, Philippine president, they stopped all the wine in, uh, rice imports at Cebu. There was containers after containers of rice because they didn't pay tax duty. In the end, there was a local agreement made that they would receive X. Now, bearing in mind, this isn't people talking one or two containers. They, they, these are billions of pesos of rice. These are big import guys. And they were held up by the Philippine presidency until he got his cut. That is the reality. That, everything's like that. Everybody wants a slice of a pie that actually makes some money. But also, as you grow things, you find people don't want to do the business with you. If you wanted to order 100, they don't mind. If you say could order 10,000, they try and increase the price, which is the reverse of business anywhere else on the planet, I think. Unless it's actually a commodity of demand, you know, I, I don't understand the logic behind it. You know, for example, banana leaves, it's not, it's not a product that's in short supply. Why is it suddenly going up in price? I don't know. Coconuts, for example, is a declining market. This is why they're going to be uh, investing in the infrastructure for coconut growing because uh, they haven't done for at least 30 years. But at the same time, I know people are getting four, four pesos at the port. By the time it reaches the UK, it's £1.30. And I know people, oh yeah, but that's the shipping cost. You're joking, aren't you? It's a bit like solar panels. Why they only cost like ten pounds in China? By the time they get to the UK, they're four hundred. What, 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 what's going on there? Who, who decides how much these things are really worth?
Um, but the problem in the Philippines though, it's not the actual people making the goods that are actually making the money. The, the profit is absolutely minimal because everybody wants their cut before the first pound has been made or the first peso. So everyone wants a payoff before, the, before you've even made your, made your first bit of money. And that, that is one of the big downsides to actually opening a business that makes physical products in the Philippines. There's other cheaper alternatives. China, for example, is cheaper. They're also geared up for it. Um, I'm not a fan of China in many senses, but I do admire the fact that they have started to increase their quality and ingenuity. Because <laughs> um, the thing is, I can order camera equipment from Hong Kong and it could be in the UK in two days, yet it will sit there for a week waiting for customs to clear it. At the same time, they have other things that have clearing, clearance houses in the UK. So it's actually getting posted within the UK, even though it's been ordered from China, because they're doing it on a replenishment. That's, that's what the Philippines and everywhere else is dealing with. They're dealing with businesses, well, countries that have geared themselves up for export. As such, very, very hard to compete against that. Because also, I can get bits and pieces sent to me they cost £1.20 in postage on eBay from China, yet will cost me £8 to get it from the UK to Spain. What's that about? Short-term thinking. That's, that's, that's why the UK is struggling as well, because there's too much greed in the actual um, government sector. Yet it's actually hindering the growth of the entire economy. But anyway, I'm off home, gonna go and have some dinner. Thanks for watching.